Daytona, the field coming to the one-to-go signal, and I am shocked nobody's coming in to top off the fuel tank. I am, too. I don't know that it's going to make any difference. I don't know that two laps under the caution flag is going to make any difference on making it. Well, some of the guys in the back of the field think it is. Terry Labonte, Jerry Nadeau, Joe Nemechek, Jeffrey Bodine are coming in to top off the gas. But all of the leaders have stayed out. Jeff Burton and uh, Kurt Busch, two of the Roush cars, ran 61 laps on a tank of fuel earlier, Bill. Yeah, Alan, uh, the guys at the back have nothing to lose, as you know, by coming in. But here's the deal up front. It's just so difficult to pass. A lot of these guys are willing to take the gamble that there will be another caution or that A, they're all make it, or B, they all will not. Some of the Fords seem to think they can make it. Some of the Chevys and the Pontiacs aren't too sure. Matt? Bill, that's exactly the same case down here in the 29 pit of Kevin Harvick. I talked to Kevin Hamlin, the crew chief. I said, are you going to come in and go for a gas and go? He says, eh, I'd hate to give up the track position. We're just going to wait and see what everybody else does. Well, you know, the Roush cars historically get the best fuel mileage, so they're sitting pretty good right now. And the only thing that's going to hurt them if there's another caution flag, because if there is another caution flag, they'll have to stop and put on four fresh tires because they are so much, the cars are so much better with the newer tires on the car. Dave, what are they saying down in your pits? Well, I'm with Bill Wilburn. He's a crew chief for Rusty Wallace. Now, it seems to me you've been getting about 50 laps out of a fuel run, but you've got to go 59 now. How come you didn't come in and top off? Uh, we just, well, we pitted at uh, 62 to go, and with the caution laps, and our fuel mileage has gotten a little bit better as the day has gone on. We've tried to free the car up a little bit. I think we'll be okay. All right. That's a word from Bill. By the way, he's got his helmet and fire suit on. He's still going over the wall changing tires for Rusty. The key word there being think. <laughs> Just past 350 miles. Oh, Sterling got a good start there, didn't he? Sterling Marlin leads. Kevin Harvick is second. Jeff Gordon is third. Kurt Busch is fourth. Elliott Sadler is fifth. The rest of the top ten are Bill Elliott, Ward Burton, Rusty Wallace, Michael Waltrip, and Ricky Rudd. And now Sterling has the lap car of Robert Presley between himself and Kevin Harvick and Jeff Gordon. Is that going to make a difference? Or will that bite him if they all line up and go by? 32 cars on the lead lap after 350 miles. 11 different leaders, 16 lead changes today. And we've just wrapped up the fifth caution of the afternoon. Bill, talk a lot about strategy. What do you hear? But here's the deal, Alan. When, before that caution came out, a lot of guys were looking at going 55 laps. So I did a random survey down here, and the feeling was that you really wanted to be inside that 55-lap window to be sure you could make it. In fact, I asked Coochies, if you stopped with 55 to go, can you make it? And I got a lot of, yeah, I'm really sure, I think. And now <laughs> they had to stop earlier than that. So it's going to be a real gamble for some of these guys coming down to the checkers if it stays green. Yeah, yeah and that's the big if. That's the gamble that a lot of the crew chiefs are betting on, that it won't stay green to the finish. Look at the run Kevin Harvick has. He's got a great run on Presley. With help from Jeff Gordon, he goes by that lap car. Robbie Loomis, Jeff Gordon's crew chief looking on, plotting his strategy. Two-time 500 winner in third place. And you don't have a chance when you're a lap down. I mean, basically, these guys, you don't exist if you're a lap down in this race. They don't want to run with cars that are lap down. Autotrader.com sponsors our move of the race. Have you seen the move of the race yet? I don't think so. Nope. I think it's still to come. I think it is still to come. Best move we've seen so far? The move of the 40 crew the last time, keeping them out front. I agree. But we think the best is yet to come. It usually is that way in the Daytona 500. Kevin Harvick started second, fell back into the field. Matt, and he's back up to second now. And he's on the move, but the biggest concern down in this 29 pit Allen is fuel conservation. Jerry Haley, Danny Lawrence, and Kevin Hamlin have poured over the computer, then walked away, walked back, looked at it again, walked away, because it still didn't have the answer they wanted. How much do you think one-tenth of a gallon would cost you today, and how much do you think it would be worth? Uh -oh. One-tenth of a gallon could cost them 
million dollars. Three, at least three quarters of a million dollars. Winner's share of today's race, $1.3 million. But these drivers aren't thinking about $1.3 million. They're thinking about winning the Daytona 500. Or a conserving fuel. It, it's hard to conserve fuel. I mean, especially in this deal, you got to keep your foot down. If you start cracking off the throttle to save fuel, you've got about 40 guys are going to pass you. Elliott Sadler back in fifth place. He's done a terrific job today. The Wood Brothers car started in 41st position, Dave. And remember, he finished third here in July, last July, Alan. So that 21 car is running very, very well. I talked to Pat Trice and his crew chief. They're a one-car team. I said, well, who do you think will work with you? Because Pat told me they needed help. Well, he says, we hope the guys who build our motors. Those are the Roush cars, and they've been running very well as well. Talk about Elliott Sadler finishing third in the Pepsi. Adrenaline is an amazing thing. As he came down to the checkered flag, he said, going in turn three, he got such a rush of adrenaline that he was going to finish third at Daytona. He started trembling, just shaking, going in turn three and shook all the way to the checkered flag. Wow. Not like he's not an excitable guy anyway. But this place can do it to you. Bill Elliott, haven't talked much about him. Sixth place for that nine car. Two-time Daytona 500 winner. Bill, solid run. Solid run and a 14.5 second pit stop last time came in 12th and moved to the front with the help of that pit stop. Was a little bit tight, made the adjustment, but the thing here is the nine car may be half a lap shy on fuel. That'll hurt. Coming up on the three quarter mark of the 44th Daytona 500, Sterling Marlin is out in front seeking a third win in the Great American Race. a bunch of them. Oh, my goodness. Bust us out there, Sammy. Back at Daytona, a massive accident down in turn one has claimed at least 15 cars. It started up toward the front of the field. You see the carnage scattered in the corner. Matt Kenseth, Johnny Benson, Ricky Rudd was in it. Oh, look at that. Kenny Wallace, John Andretti, Casey Atwood. Is that Jeff Gordon? Can't see. I don't think so. I think Jeff Gordon. I think that Kevin Harvick spun. I think that Jeff Gordon was able to get underneath him. I don't know that for sure. Kenny Wallace. Car is on fire, but he's quickly out of the car. Todd Bodine's car there, just barely visible on the left of the screen. Looks like everybody's window nets are dropped. Yeah, down. Gordon made it through. What a scene. Casey Atwood climbing out. Good news. Look at his car. All torn up. At the tracks where they use the restricted engine package, Daytona and Talladega, all the drivers talk about the big one. Harvick is out of his car. They talk about the big one, the wreck that sweeps up a large number of cars. It's just happened three quarters of the way through the race. Yep. Jerry Nadu damaged in it. He's just driven back around to pit road. There's Bobby Hamilton. See the Hans device? He's getting off his neck. The head and neck restraint. One of the two that are approved and mandated by NASCAR. And that's the second car that Hamilton has torn up this week. I think Bobby Hamilton's telling the fire guy, hey guys, my car's on fire. How about, come on over. Put it out. Sixth caution of the 500, and it was a big one. Let's take a look at what happened. There's, There's Kenny, Kenny Wallace. Now the car, yep. Yeah. All right, Jeff Gordon and, and the Kevin Harvick make contact going down in turn one. And there we were talking about throwing the block, and that looks like what happened. And the first four or five cars get through, and then about the seventh or eighth, I don't know, about the... Wherever the 43 car of Andretti, that was the next car to hit. And after that, there's no place for anyone to go. That's right. The track just becomes completely blocked. Let's take another look. See that? Well, that's kind of a little bit afterwards, but... 
See Harvick slide back up. How did Ward Burton get through that? Wow. And all those guards on the inside. And then the hole closed up. Add Jeremy Mayfield to the list of those involved, the 19 car. Man, oh man. Now look, 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 let's take another look here. Jeff goes down. Kevin Harvick goes to put on the block. Drives down on top of Jeff. Jeff just didn't give. Or if he try if he tried to get out, he didn't get out in time. Yeah. One of the two. Andretti, a hard lick. Oh, wow. You know, same thing happened in the qualifying race between Tony Stewart. Is that Schrader caught up in it, too? Yep. Schrader got a piece of it. Folks, just watch this and listen as you're part of the big one. with Jeff Gordon. We see him. All right, he goes down and tries to get on the inside of Harvick. Harvick comes down to block. They make contact. Ricky Rudd, let's ride on board with him. This all unfolds right in front of Ricky when Harvick starts to come back down across the racetrack. He's right in Rudd's path. You see Ricky's just far away. You see smoke, he slows down. Oh, you can't line. see anything. Oh, coming up across the front. Coming back down. Oh, and Miller just, racetrack, Miller racetrack. Just gets hot. He had it right in rear. Almost had it cleared. Bill Weber. Okay, Jeff Gordon's on pit road. Missed pit road last time. He didn't think it would be open by the time they told him it was going to be open. He was past the entrance. Robbie Loomis said, I want you to come in this time. We're going to go out about 15th, but I want to get those tires off of there and check the right front. He doesn't have any right front damage. He's getting tires. He said it was battling with the 97. When Harvick came down, there was nowhere for him to go, and that's what created the wreck. Got 11 cars so far on my list of those in the accident. And that so number, that they, number probably doesn't include a couple who got damaged and continued away. You know, as someone said, you know, they, they changed the rules trying to make it safer. And again, I, hopefully everyone is okay, but we still have the big one. And as, of all the, so many of the drivers have said, cars don't cause the wreck. It's drivers that cause the big wrecks by making contact. Yeah. Absolutely right, PP. I talked about that earlier. It's just, you know, the cars are safer. You're right. They're, they're the head and neck restraints. We have a lot more safer race cars as far as around the drivers. But the guys make mistakes. You get in crashes like that. That's what we were talking about. Give and take. There was too much take there. Ken Schrader took his car to the garage. You see the remains of... Richard Petty's Dodge that John Andretti was driving. Bobby Hamilton Chevy. And the cleanup continues. Dale Earnhardt Jr. involved in his third incident of the day. He got caught up in the middle of the big one that happened down in turns one and two. In turn number one, after the big one, 16 cars damaged in an accident. And the inside of turn one at Daytona looks like a junkyard. It all started when 24 of Jeff Gordon and Kevin Harvick, the 29, made contact. There you see Harvick gets bumped from behind by Jeff Gordon when he goes down to block Jeff. They make contact. He goes across the racetrack. And then along comes Andretti, and all of a sudden the racetrack is blocked. There's no place for anyone to go except into the wreck, and that's where they go. And we talked earlier about the little mirrors guys are putting on the, the roll bar on their left side of the car and blocking and how that applies to these rules and this kind of racing. And you got to do it. I mean, that's what you have to do. You've got to use those mirrors. Here we got on board with Kevin Harvick. He moves down the block, Jeff. Jeff just catches him in the left rear, and that's all it takes. We heard the lights out when he backed the thing in the fence. <laughs> mm. Robbie Gordon.
third and Jeffrey Bodine down through the grass. Ryan Newman slipped through there too. I mean, that's one place that a race car driver does not want to go as in the grass, but they were wise to do that. Let's add a 17th car to that. Mike Wallace, I just saw in that view, was in that wreck too. 17 cars, fortunately, all of the drivers out of their cars, and they're all okay. 46 laps to go in the Daytona 500. It's overpowering. Hey. Under caution at the 44th Daytona 500 after a 17 car accident down in turns one and two. Here's what Jeff Gordon said after it was over. My right front a little bit. I don't think it's too bad. I mean, he just totally tried to block me. I didn't even. I wasn't even really trying to get up there. That damn 97, the wild man, and I'm trying to block him. You know, and the, the 29 had a run, and he started to come down. Well, there you have it. I mean, we talked about the blocking, and, and that's exactly what happened. Marty Snyder. Well, Ricky Rudd had a very good view. First of all, Ricky, what was your view? What did you see happening in front of you? And how much blocking is going on out there? Uh, I really couldn't tell what happened, Marty. We've been up front there, and we came in on that last pit stop. And I had a little miscommunication. I couldn't find a pit like I needed to, so we came back out. We are about 10th when the wreck happened. And... Uh, couldn't see what happened. I, somebody had turned sideways, hit the fence, come back down. I, I drove to the bottom trying to miss it, and he hit me in the right rear quarter panel, turned me head on in the fence, and it was pretty much over after that. I really couldn't tell what happened. It was pretty wild out there, pretty typical restricted plate racing. A lot of blocking going on. Uh, yeah, too much probably, yeah. All right, Dave Burns has Kenny Wallace. And Kenny Wallace has walked out of the care center. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. You know, first of all, I just want to thank Penzo and DI, you know, but... Uh, I guess everybody wants to know what the hell happened, right? Oh, uh, yes, please. Had a big wreck, and, uh, you know, it's Daytona and Talladega. You know, the same thing happened last year. 50 laps ago, we were all going for it, and uh, I was shooting a three wide up the middle, and they just, uh, I guess, Harvick and Gordon got together. Did you see your, the fire in your car? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I was just going low, hoping I could miss Harvick, but I T-boned him, and uh, I was bursting into flames. I told my wife it was a fiery crash. <laughs> It's a bad deal, I know it is, but what are you going to do? Little E's in there laughing. He says it's the first big crash he's ever been through in his life. I'm not happy. He's trying to cheer me up, but I think the only thing, injury I had was to my helmet, just pulling the plug. There's more famous drivers behind me. Get some of them. Well, and that will be Kevin Harvick walking out here in just a second. Thanks, Kenny. We're glad that he is okay, and we'll have Harvick when we come back. Alan? All right, Dave. Got uh, the ranks of the contenders thinned considerably by that crash. Now just 18 cars on the lead lap. Back here at Daytona, we have caught up with Kevin Harvick, who was in front of Gordon when the whole thing started. And Kevin, looked like you were trying to hold your position. What happened? Well, I mean, there's 50 laps to go in the Daytona 500, and everybody's uh, trying to fight for everything they've gotten. And uh, I thought there was enough room, and I must have just come down and caught the nose of Gordon's car. But uh, after that, it pretty much all hell broke loose. You hit the wall hard going backwards. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Uh, that, was, that was the least of the licks. I think there was four or five more after that. So, uh, you know. I just hate it for this Goodwrench team. I mean, we had a chance to win the Daytona 500, and now we got a pile of junk. What would you do next time? Same thing. Did you get a clear call from your spotter to come down? No. I mean, there was. It was obviously. I. I, I don't know if everything was happening so fast, but uh, there was no clear. There was no anything. It was just, you know, it was just back and forth, and, and there was a lot of things happening. So uh, I looked in the mirror and, and thought there was enough room, and he couldn't hit me very far up on the bumper. And it was just enough. I mean, you're out of pretty much on the edge, out of control. It's just. And in the end, your fault or Jeff's? Well, right now, I want to pinch his neck off, but I don't know whose fault it is. I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> All right, he's going to look at the tape. He'll get a definitive answer when he sees the tape roll. Alan? Okay, thank you. Back under green with 100 miles to go when they come to the start-finish line. So and now we have a lap car of Ricky Craven between Sterling Marlin and Kurt Busch. And Bush trying to get by, finally gets a run on the outside. And I think that Elliott Sadler, the 21, nine car Bill Elliott, I think all those guys are going to go with him and put Craven behind them. Six of the leaders did not stop. 
on that caution. Sterling Marlin, Kurt Busch, Elliott Sadler, Bill Elliott, Rusty Wallace, and Mark Martin did not pit. The other lead lap cars did. These guys felt like they could not afford to give up that track position. We've seen it all day long. It's so hard to pass the leader. Sterling Marlin feels like that these caution flag laps running around the racetrack at reduced speed has given them enough fuel to finish the race. Elliott Sadler trying to get a push from Bill Elliott. In third spot. And not too many guys have passed Sterling today. No. <laughs> A lot of cars involved in that big accident. Here's the list. That's the first part of the list. There are more. Bobby Labonte getting repairs made behind the wall. You see Kevin Harvick, Ricky Rudd. 18 cars now damaged in that wreck. Michael Waltrip trying to make his way back up. He's in fifth place. And he's just moved by Delaney up for fourth. So Michael's starting to rumble again. Haven't seen him up front in a while. Not contending for the lead anyway. See Jeff Green there in the 30 car in seventh position. Haven't seen him too much today, but here he is with just a few laps to go, 40 laps to go, a chance to win the Daytona 500. Here comes Michael on the inside of Robert Presley. Michael led from lap four to lap 23, has not been at the point since. He's not there yet either, but he's getting there. Certainly looks like he's rolling right now. Elliott Sadler to block. Lap cars mixed in there. Now the three wide going in the corners. Elliott goes by. Ricky Craven on the outside. Oh, he's got the lead. Kurt Busch with a look under Sterling Marlin. The 23-year-old from Las Vegas is going to lead the Daytona 500 at the strike. Clear, 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 clear. Clear, clear, clear. Yes, sir. Clear, clear, clear. And it just... Jeff Gordon a little bit ago, saying the wild man, talking about Kurt Busch. Yeah, well, there, and there's no patience like we talked about. There's a guy that has a good race car, and you could see in the last couple laps, kept looking down and round and got Elliott Sadler to go with him. Matt Yoakum. Well, Alan, if you recall back following the season finale at New Hampshire, the biggest shock in the offseason was when owner Jack Roush decided to swap the crews on the six in the 97. Veteran Jimmy Finnick came over to become the crew chief for Kurt Busch. He told me his biggest agenda for this year in the first four races was just to finish. Dick Kurt on that huge 31st and call the points that he got himself into last year. He's also trying to keep him calm. He's a little bit antsy earlier on. One thing though, Mark Martin did not want this car which was not completed when Jimmy was going to the 97. So Jimmy brought it with him. He says he's got a few things on there he was trying for this year. It's brand new, and they hope to make that debut, and Auspicious want to take it to victory lane. Remember, this 97 team has never won a Winston Cup race. We talked at the top of our broadcast on the pre-race show and a couple of other times during the day, youth versus experience. Kurt Busch in the 97 in his second 500 start. Elliott Sadler in the 21 in his third, excuse me, his fourth. And the defending 500 winner, Michael Waltrip, is working on him. Waltrip, bobbing and weaving, got the nose to the outside of Sadler for second. Watch that 15. And Wally, you talked about at the very beginning of the show about give and take, and they would give and take early. Right now, there is no give. It's all take. Three deep in the pack. Tight racing. These guys are trying to get everything they can out because they got to be in a position to be in a position to win this race. You've got to be in that top five, four or five cars when it gets down to the end of this race. That's where everybody's trying to be right now. Jeff Gordon in the middle, three wide, trying to work his way back to the front. Jeff Burton, there with him, 99 car. Here comes Mark Martin in the six. Robbie Gordon, the black and orange car. Almost squeezed up in front of Gordon when there wasn't room. Your hand, 35 to go. 
Dale Jarrett, three times a 500 winner. He's on the move late. Now this is, I don't, we'll see what happens to but I think this is where the experienced guys hook up. Guys like Jeff Gordon and Jarrett and Mark Martin, Sterling Marlin, they're used to running with each other. I think they'll start finding each other. On the other hand, the other guys will line up. Jarrett trying to pick up a draft from behind. The 30 car is Jeff Green. Looking ahead from Robbie Gordon's car. Bump, bump. Goes up and bumps the back of the 30 car. But you, gotta, you wanna do that when these cars are in a straight line. You can't afford to do it when they're going to the corners. Look at this racing. Three deep, five rows stacked up. The patience went out the window a couple yes. laps ago. Oh, that's a thing of the past. Dale Jarrett clearly to third. Kurt Busch bobbing to try and break the draft on Michael Waltrip. Michael with the push from Jarrett. Yeah, I think Kurt's about ready to get a move put on him because I think wherever Michael goes, Dale Jarrett's going to go with him. Kurt Busch is getting set up, <laughs> isn't he? Yeah, I think he is. You said it a minute ago, Wally. The older guys are going to work together. You've got Michael Waltrip and Dale Jarrett. Many years' experience at this racetrack. Lined up behind Kurt Busch in his second Daytona 500. And you know Jeff Gordon's going to go where Michael goes, where Dale Jarrett goes, and where Elliot Sattler goes, because he wants to get by that car of Kurt Busch as well. He also wants to stay with the Chevy. That's something they've been talking about on the radio. Gordon definitely wants the Chevys to try and hook up together. That would be Michael Waltrip in a Chevy. Gordon, and then behind them, Jeff Green and Robbie Gordon. But even though it looks like Michael's setting up Kurt Busch, yet no pass for the lead. Here comes Elliot Sadler with a push from Jeff Gordon. Dale Jarrett getting shuffled back. And Jarrett said, man, now how did this happen? <laughs> that was not part of the equation. Mark Martin. <laughs> Running fifth is Mark. Here comes Sterling Marlin. He's trying to get a push by Jarrett from Jeff Green and Robbie Gordon. And Jarrett loses a couple of more spots. And they're trying to get by that 97 for BP, but just like you said, it's hard to pass. Michael might have a run now, coming off turn four. No, nope. I thought he had the nose under the 97 car, couldn't quite make it. Who Rusty Wallace squeezing in front of Robbie Gordon. It's the last lap. Oh, no, Rusty, careful now. We saw what happened when you blocked going down to turn one. I think that was Jeff Gordon's radio. He said they're racing like it's the last lap. Hey, track position is everything. It may be the last lap if you can get front. Now, Kurt Busch did not stop on that caution. Michael Waltrip has fresher tires. Mm -hmm. Much of a difference? I always say tires make a difference. Especially if it's as warm as it is today, I think it will make a difference. But still, it's all your buddies who's going to make the biggest difference on this deal. You pull out, if they go with you. Big traffic jam off turn four. You know, here's the worst part. It seems like it's it's you can pass back around second or third. It's the lead that's so hard to get by. Boy, Michael's trying everything he can. And here comes Terry Collins. Oh, contact. Jeff Green goes up, almost gets in the wall on the backstretch. As Kenny Schroeder said, that's a stupid place to wreck in the middle of the backstretch. Nice the road save. straight. Nice save by Jeff Green. Jimmy Johnson, the pole sitter. Still on the lead lap, 12th spot. Here's Jeffrey Bodine, the 09 car, right behind Jimmy Johnson. Is Jimmy Johnson's car loose or what? Does he have a... Looks like he's got a oh, fire trouble. Now. Johnson hits Jeff Green. He's in the grass. 
I think he had a tire going down there. If he didn't, he does. <laughs> Keeps it off the wall. Left, left rear flat. Left rear tire is flat. Okay, bud. Caution's out. Seventh one of the Daytona 500. And sets a critical decision in the hands of the crew chiefs. Do I stop? Take those tires. No way. No one is going to give up track position now. No one. Some cars farther back, not on the lead lap, trying to race their way to the start-finish line. No one will succeed. And we go under the yellow flag once again. Careful, Jimmy. But something, something was loose before that. I just thought it was the air. Something's up on her back this thing. Yeah, Jimmy, the left rear tire's flat. Yeah, you can watch here. I was watching right through here, right there on the bottom. You see his car just starts getting a little bit sideways. He was losing the left rear tire. And right about here, it really went. Probably that's where it dropped down on the inner liner. And is that Jeff Green that does a tremendous yeah. job what in saving job. that car? Yeah. Oh, Johnson goes up and turns the Jeff Green car sideways. And somehow Jeff Green keeps it under control. Nice save by Jeff. That was his second save in a lap, right? Yeah. Yes. On board with Jimmy Johnson and Lowe's car. Listen. Third. Hang on, buddy. No, don't worry. He's <laughs> hanging on. <laughs> you have to tell him that. I did that. Let's go on board with Bill Elliott and watch this. saying that Jeff Green is the greatest race car driver in the world <laughs> yeah. for saving that thing. He didn't come up in front of them. Might have just seen our move of the race. Two of them from Jeff Green. Should have crashed twice. All right. Will anybody come? BP says no. Wally says no. Michael Waltrip. Michael Waltrip, the second place car, comes in. Wow. Elliot Sadler comes in. Most of the cars came in, Marty. Well, Michael Waltrip was tight, so they wanted four tires. Slugger Lavius Crucci said, I think four tires will win the race. They'll take a round of wedge out of the left side. They were also going to put some tape on the grill because he's only running 200 degrees on the racetrack. This is a gamble because a lot of cars stayed out. Dave Burns? The 21 car of Elliott Sadler came in. He had trouble when part of the valence on the front of the car the air hose got caught on it coming around. He ripped it through, and he finally got out of here. But Elliott wanted tires. They did not change the cars. Matt? Dave, Dale Jarrett already came in for service, and he's already heading back out of the racetrack. He felt like he had a tire going down. He said his car was very loose. He feels like uh, he felt like he had some debris. The crew did make a wedge adjustment on the 88 car. Kurt Busch stayed out. Jeff Gordon stayed out. Sterling Marlin and Ryan Newman stayed out. Others coming on to pit road under the caution for this crash. Here's our Pepsi race recap. What's happened so far in the Daytona 500? Just two laps in, one of the favorites to win, Tony Stewart. Engine broken, day done. And then Dale Earnhardt loses the right front tire. He gets back on the racetrack, puts involved in a crash later. This is Brett Bodine, lap 101, just at the halfway point of the race, getting tagged and spun. He gets away with it okay. And then Sean Robinson in 49 and Mike Skinner make contact off turn two. Big story of the day, Kevin Harvick and Jeff Gordon tangle racing for second. By the time it's done, 18 cars are involved in the melee down in turn one. All the drivers okay, but it started because of blocking. Harvick trying to defend his turf on Gordon. They both wanted the same spot on racetrack. Cleanup continues here at Daytona. We'll come back to the restart in a minute. Back at Daytona, there'll be 24 laps to go as they come to the green with Kurt Busch, the 23-year-old from Las Vegas, leading the Daytona 500 in just his second try. First four on the track, and that left-hand lane did not stop for tires. How long will Kurt Busch be in the lead is the question. Jeff Gordon and Sterling Marlin are the two right behind him. 
Now Jeff Gordon is laying back. He's trying to get him a run off that second corner with a push from Sterling Marlin. Oh, and Jarrett almost Robert Preston he had the rear wheels off the ground, just like you talked about earlier, BP, and all over him. That was Preston in the white car behind Ricky Craven. Making some contact. Here comes Jeff Gordon trying to get by Craven. He's got to push him, Sterling Marlin. Kurt push to block. Gordon going to get shuffled by Marlin. No, that was the lap car of Craven. Jeff Burton sticks his nose in the middle three wide. And meanwhile, the lead, Jeff Gordon goes for the lead. The veterans stick together. Shuffle Kurt Busch out of the top spot. Gordon takes the point. Robert Presley sticking his nose under Craven. And he wisely backed off down in turn one. There wasn't room. Kurt Busch has lost second spot. He's got in a battle right now with Ryan Newman for third. He's only got the lap car of Ricky Craven behind him to push. His only shot now is to get up there in between Mark Martin. He slides up and does it. Ward Burton to fourth. Haven't talked about Ward much all day. Started 19th. He's run kind of mid-pack for a lot of the event. Missed the wreck. That helped. In the 125-mile qualifying race that Jeff Gordon was in on Thursday, he got the lead on the first lap. No one could pass him. He spent a lot of the first three quarters of this race struggling with an in-handling car. He's out in front now. Is it going to be enough? Mark Martin there. Last car in that five-car breakaway. Never won here at Day. Started in 39th place today. Good race for sixth. There it is. Elliott Sattler, 21. Kurt Busch, 97. Look at Michael Waltrip in the 15, pinned way back in this traffic. He was second before coming onto pit road. And Kurt Busch is one dejected little puppy right now. And Michael went up the middle. Gained a spot on Robbie Gordon there between turn one and two. He's still in the middle. Trying to force his way to the inside. But Dale Jarrett said, uh-uh, that's my spot. Here comes Rusty Wallace on the inside of Kurt Busch. There are 50 miles to go in the 44th running of the Daytona 500, the Great American Race. 13, 12 rather, million dollars on the line. Oh my goodness, Robbie Gordon had a great run and tried to drive on the inside of Rusty Wallace. Wisely, once again, backed off on board with Robbie Gordon. Finally, Michael speeds down there. Boy, I guarantee you, he was frustrated those couple laps. He's got a good car stuck in the middle. You need to get in that high line or low line. And he wants to go. Better hurry. 20 laps, not a lot of time to catch that lead group. Just tuning in, it's been a very exciting race so far. 18 lead changes among 11 drivers. Caution flag has waved on seven different occasions. The big story was a multi-car wreck involving 18 different drivers at the three-quarter mark of this event. Jeff Gordon out in front, trying to win the 500 for a third time. Sterling Marlin right behind him in the 40 car. Ditto, trying to win the Great American Race for a third time. Behind him, they are frantically scrambling to catch. Gotta stay in line if they're gonna catch that lead group, EP. Guys are all scattered out side by side, and that's exactly what those top five cars wanna see in their mirror. These guys are all trying to get themselves in position, but in trying to get themselves in position, they get farther away from the leader. Let's check with some of the crew chiefs in the lead cars. Here's Bill Weber. 
with crew chief Robbie Loomis, the leader for Jeff Gordon. Your car's been tight all day. Now you're out front. Can you stay there? Well, you know, we don't know. Just Jeff's a great drafter, and he's up front right where he wants to be. We've got a long way to go. We've just got to see what happens here. Did you learn enough in the qualifying race to help you in this situation, Robbie? We learned a lot, and uh, right now we're just all kind of holding our breath. Pip has done a great job all day getting him out front there, and we're just going to see what happens. They're defending Winston Cup champions. They'd like to start 2002 with a win in the Daytona 500. To Matt Yoko. Bill Lee McCall is Sterling Marlins crew chief. You didn't pit to take on fresh tires. How bad is that going to hurt, or is your car better on older tires? Yeah, our car's pretty good right now. We were a little bit better uh, on old tires. Got the car freed up, so... Uh, you know, we were good on fuel mileage, so we we wanted to stay out and hopefully, uh, you know, gain some track position because, you know, track position is pretty tough right now. And, you know, we're we're wanting to set Pat right now and try to break away from the second group. Uh, of course, like Dodd's been good all day. Liam McCall trying to win his first 500. Sterling Marlin, his third. Marty. Matt, how much will experience mean? Young Ryan Newman up front as crew chief Matt Borland. Matt, he's gotten there. Can he pass two more cars? Uh, I don't know about that yet, but uh, we're, we're uh, real happy with where we're sitting right now. A top five would be great for us. Uh, if we got something for them at the end, we'll try it, but uh, we'll just ride for right now. Inexperience behind the wheel, but on the radio, experience. Former Daytona 500 winner Buddy Baker is his spotter, along with his car owner, Roger Pinsky. Today, Burns. Ben Leslie, the new crew chief for Mark Martin, has been studying his monitor like a chessboard. All right, he gave him two right side tires. Does he have a move he can make? Boy, you know, I don't know. Um, the tenant to Mark has, I'm sure he's got something up his sleeve. What it is, I wouldn't have a clue. Um, I'd just like to take the time to thank all the hard work that everybody at Roush Racing, Viagra Ford Taurus has done. This week and a half has been a little bit of a struggle, and everybody's pulled together. And, you know, hopefully we can come out of this with a real good run. Well, they're going to watch, and about all they can do is wait. The only thing he's told him in the last few laps on the radio, what lap he's on. Alan? Ward Burton, also in the top five, running fourth. Bill Davis Racing Dodge. He's been in contention to win this race on several occasions, but bad luck has befallen him near the finish every time. What about today? Elliot Sadler trying to make a move on Mark Martin. He's trying to follow that 22 car. And Ward Burton's getting the move on Ryan Newman. He gets the push from that 21 car, goes alongside Ryan Newman. Oh, man. Third place. Oh, the Mark Martin car goes way up the hill. It's like he got in the corner and the car got loose or something. Had to go up the hill to catch it. That gives Newman an opening to slide up in front of Mark in that outside lane. Gets some drafting help from behind. Made the gamble to come on to pit road under that last caution was Michael Waltrip. This is not worked out for him. He's all the way back in 14th place. How about Ward Burton, Matt? Well, I'll tell you what, Alan, if you watch Tommy Baldwin Jr. down here, each lap it's like he's almost driving the car with Ward, very animated on top of the pit box. I asked him about 60 laps ago when he's running mid-pack, are you guys okay? Because they were anticipating a very stout piece for this race. He says, oh yeah, we learned our lesson last year. We left 53 laps and we were crashed out running fourth. So we knew just to save our stuff until the end because that's when all the big money takes place. Look at Jeffrey Bodine in the 09 car. The 1986 winner of the 500, who many thoughts career ended in a vicious crash here at Daytona back in 2000. Only got five races this season that he's going to run in this car, but he is showing he can still get the job done. This car is owned by James Finch, and after the Budweiser shootout, they dyno-tested, chassis dyno-tested a lot of the cars, and James said, hey, how about putting my car on there? I want to see what I have. And the 09 car had more power than any of them. Bodine to fifth. Here comes Michael Waltrip trying to get back into it. Michael's got to make his move like he's trying everything he can to make his move now. He needs to get with that top group if he's going to have a shot at winning this race again. 
Rusty Wallace drives on the inside of the 97 of Kurt Busch. Gets a great run. That's Michael Walter. I'm sorry, Michael yep. Walter. That Napa thing looks like the Miller Lite thing to me every time I see it. Sorry. Defending 500 winner. Trying to rally back. Got a lot of work to do and not a lot of time to do it. Robbie Gordon behind him in the Richard Childress 31. That league group is starting to stretch it out. Dale Jarrett's pushing as hard as he can on that gas pedal right now. Six car in line right there. Ten to go and they come back around. Like I said earlier, BP, what do you think? They're going to have to start trying to make a moves here with at least four to go, don't you? Oh, yeah. They can't wait till the last lap because Jeff Gordon is going to make that DuPont Chevy very, very wide on that last lap. And the last time by Jeff Gordon ran a speed actually faster than the pole speed. He ran, 100, uh, he ran a 48.41. The pole position was 48.43 seconds. Now, here's where you got the guys making deals. Sterling Marlin, I'm sure, is trying to find out what Ward Burton wants to do. And if Ward Burton will go with Sterling, if he pulls out and makes the move on Jeff Gordon, and so on back and so on back. Everybody's trying to figure out right now who's going to go with who. Two chiefs are talking to other two chiefs, and spotters are talking to other spotters, and drivers are talking to their spotters and saying, hey, go over to this spotter, that 22 car Ward Burton, see if he'll go with me if I pull out. Trouble, Robbie Gordon. Caution is out. <laughs> Gordon was 10th, last lap. Here comes Jeff Gordon. Back to the caution flag. Now we will have a single file restart too. And we'll have a restart inside the final 10 laps. What Jeff Gordon did not want to see. Remember, in 2000, Johnny Benson was leading this race. No one could get by him. Caution flag came out with about eight laps to go, and Jarrett passed him with four or five laps to go to win the Daytona 500. Jeff Gordon is saying, Robbie Gordon, why did you have to crash and bring up the caution flag? Jeff and Robbie, of course, not related tell that by New Hampshire race last year. Yeah, remember, they were the ones that were fighting it out with fenders at the end of the last race of 2001. Now, nobody. Nobody. <laughs> we'll Nobody's coming. <laughs> Boy, they blew it. We blew it on that last time. Looks like, you remember I talked about earlier, when the cars get real close to each other in the banking, it makes the car on the bottom loose, and I think that's what happened to Robbie Gordon, PP. He got up there beside Rusty Wallace. There was not enough air on the back of that car to push the car into the racetrack, lost downforce, and looped it. Watch this. He goes in the corner. Rusty Wallace is on the outside. Now listen to this. Listen to the engine. Robbie just spun. Robbie just spun. Hang on, gas it. Back there to Waller, he just passed. 10-2, you all right, On board, Bill Elliott. Oh, man, that wow. was so close. That was close. Experience. Look. Oh. <laughs> and, and having your eyes close. Now, Kurt <laughs> Busch up. is coming down pit road. 97 car is in. I guess they decided at four tires that they're going to need four tires to try to make a run to the front. Go ahead, Sean. No, Sean, you got a helmet? Oh. Matt? And they are going to take on tires. Remember back in a Pepsi 400, back in the mid-80s, Alan, Bobby Allison pulled the same move late in the going. But about 10 laps ago, came in for fresh tires and won the thing. And Jimmy Finnick, who won this event with Bobby Allison, remembers that. And so they had nothing to lose. Alan? We'll find out where he restarts and gets set for what should be a dramatic finish to the Daytona 500 when we come back on NBC. 
The Daytona 500, the great American race, has come down to what will be a final, frantic, six-lap sprint to the checkered flag. Jeff Gordon leads. Sterling Marlin is second. Both two-time Daytona 500 winners. But they've got a hungry pack behind them who've never won it before. Ward Burton and Elliott Sadler in third and fourth. Then more experience. The 86 winner, Jeff Bodine in fifth. And Dale Jarrett, a three-time 500 champion in sixth. And this restart is going to be the whole marbles here. Jeff Gordon's got to be careful that Sterling Marlin doesn't lay back and get a run on him on the back straight away. you ready? Green flag, green flag. If they don't get by Jeff Gordon before they come around the next time, oh, they will not pass it. And Michael Trouble. Walter. Michael Waltrip. Jeff Green is involved. Oh, ball. Jeff Gordon spinning down the inside. Gordon is in the grass. They're racing for the lead at the head of the pack. Double wide. Stay below the white line. You got some people out there. There you go. Sterling oh, Marlin. He's got damage. He must have hit Gordon. And here comes Ward Burton on the outside. He's got Back around. Track's clear. With Elliott Sadler giving him some help. Here's Jeffrey Bodine trying to help the 40 car. Caution flag is out. This could be the race to the finish of the Daytona 500. You'll see some rubbing here, I'm sure, getting back to the line. This is this may be it. Six cars sprinting toward the caution flag. Marlin inside, seeking his third 500 win. Ward Burton trying to get his first victory. Two dodges, drag racing back to the caution flag. Who's going to get there first? Marlin by the nose. I think what happened was Sterling Marlin went down to go underneath Jeff Gordon. Jeff Gordon went to put the block on, and he went across the nose of Sterling Marlin's car, and that's what spun him out. The race is not over. They're going to red flag the event. They're going to stop the field, restart the race, and try and settle it. And Terry Labonte, a lot of damage to the nose of that car. And with Sterling, can he last a couple of laps under the green? And I believe that's where Jeff Gordon came across the nose of Sterling's car. Jeff Gordon on pit road. He may not be out of this yet if they're red flagging this thing, Bill. Jeff Gordon on pit road. The spotter said we got spun. We got spun. The car looks fine. He's getting right side tires. This is supposed to be a four tire stop. They want to get on pit road and get off of it before the red flag comes out. Left sides will go on. We'll have plenty of room to get out of pit road. They tighten the lugs, check the roof flaps, pull the fender away from the front left tire, and send Gordon back out off of pit road. But he came in while the pit road was closed. So he's going to have to go to the end of the line on the restart. We'll double check that to be sure. But the red and the red flag with the gold Airport cross good, signaling pit road is closed. Picture, it is out. Now, there's only about, uh, there it is. 14 cars on the lead lap. The red flag's coming out. Hey, the red, Jeff, they're stopped back there, so be careful coming off too. The red flag is out over the Daytona 500 with four and a half laps to go. But what, who did all this crashing on the backstretch off turn two? See the debris off turn two? I think that was pieces still probably coming off oh, the cars from the wreck on from the, the wreck on the front stretch. I got you. Wow. That may I'll even... Fought. I mean, Sterling hung back so much there that, uh, I mean, you know, he. I just, I didn't have a choice but to slow down there. And he had a run on me and I blocked him, you know, got myself turned. That's got myself turned. Yep. Jeff Gordon's explanation. Let's take a look at what happened all over the place. Well, here's what we we're talking about. This is the, so key on this restart. Sterling was laying back. Now, all these guys back here are jamming up because some of these guys laid back before the restart. Michael Waltrip hit by Mark Martin. Rusty Wallace is involved. Watch Waltrip almost go by the pace car here. Yikes. And Robert Presley's car being pushed on pit road. Man, pace car gassed it right there at the last second. <laughs> One more look. We see if Jeff Gordon bring them down really, really slow. And then they, someone, Mark Martin, runs in the back of Michael Waltrip. And now watch here, Sterling Marlin goes underneath the, of Jeff. Jeff goes down, tries to run the black block on Sterling, and runs across the nose. But Marlin was below that yellow line, wasn't he? That's out of bounds. Drivers were told in the driver's meeting, if you go below that yellow line and advance your position, you're going to be penalized. That's right. Will they penalize Sterling Marlin there? There's Jeff Green. What a mess. 
On board with Bill Elliott. That's two wrecks he just has driven right Great. by. Good job. Okay. okay, go ahead, Alan. Now, watch the yellow line on the... No, you won't see it. Well, yeah, we will. Hey, he was down there. Jeff does a pretty good job right, down the on the grass. Line. You got some people out there. All right, now, watch the yellow line at the bottom of the track. See if Sterling Marlin goes below that yellow line. This line here. If you go below the yellow line and advance your position, that's a penalty. Marlin's inside of Gordon. There's the contact. Well, I don't know. He had the, he definitely had the left sides below the yellow line. Now, whether or not he didn't, I don't think the right sides, were, the whole car was ever below the yellow line, but he definitely had the left sides. That's a tough call by NASCAR. It's a judgment call and a very tough call. One more look. Jeff Burton got a piece of it. Terry Labonte, Rusty Wallace, and Bill Elliott. And there you see the 40 car with the left side below the yellow line. But the NASCAR officials are seeing the same pictures we are, so they'll make a decision. And we'll wait to see what that decision is. I, I think another problem he's got is that right rear, or that right front tire is rubbing pretty hard on that fender. So it may not make a difference. That's John Darby, the guy in the blue shirt. He's the new Winston Cup director. And the man in the uh, blue sport coat right of the screen with the dark glasses is David Hoots. He is the race director. He's the referee, basically. His call, ball or strike. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Well, I'm sure he's checked. He may have been wondering how that right front damage looks. The car, Sterling Marlin is jumping out of his car. He's going around to look at the right front fender. But, oh, he can't do that. You can't work on your car under the red flag. That's the NASCAR rule. Pull it off a little bit. You're not allowed hey, to work on out. your car they under the red flag. Off. Matt? Well, Alan down here in the 40 pit, Lee McCall. The biggest concern is that right front fender. How is it? Well, we don't know. We don't know yet. We uh, we think it's rubbing a little bit, but um, we'll just have to see when Sterling comes around, and uh, hopefully it's okay. Um, you know, I don't I don't know what happened out there, but uh, it's just been an awesome day for the Coors Light race team and uh, everybody that at Chip Ganassi Racing. Uh, all the guys back to the shop give us a great car and. Guys had great pit stops today, so uh, every hot comes out, we uh, we had a good speed week. Sterling looked at it. What did he say? They wouldn't let him look at it, so uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know how bad it is. We just again, we just have to let's see. Is it? Uh, we might have to come in. We don't know yet. Hey, Matt. Matt, Manny. tell Lee that they wouldn't let him pull it out. They let him look at it. They wouldn't let him pull it out. Lee, they let him look at it, but they wouldn't let him pull it out because you know that's against the rules under red flag conditions. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> I, I don't know. You know, it's, uh, again, it's just been a great day for the whole organization. Uh, hopefully he can get it out enough. <laughs> hopefully he can get it out. But again, you can't, you're not allowed to work on the car during a red flag condition. That's right. So, a couple of things that we'll wait to hear from NASCAR on. Sterling Marlin below the line. Watch Sterling jump out of the car here. And is he working on his car under the red flag? <laughs> that looked like a pull to me. I don't know about you. You see the official jump out of the pace car saying, hey, no, you can't no, do that. no, 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 no. <laughs> Get back in there. Well, we have seen our share of twists and turns over the years in the Daytona 500, but this one just may top them all. Well, <laughs> I mean, we've had all kinds of things happen here in this last uh, hour of the race. We see the 33 car up there, Mike Wallace. He told me, Andy Peter told him, Mike, if you finish in the top five in the Daytona 500, we'll go to Rockingham next week. Doesn't look like the 33 is going to go to, to the Rockingham race. Here's another look. 
Marlin. Left side tires below the yellow line. You see the yellow line and you see the cars there. The only judgment is that NASCAR has to make here is because he's clearly below the line. Did he advance his position by going down there? Or did he come back up behind Gordon on the track? That's that's the call. But, well, I, mean, and, and, I mean, you're not supposed to be below the yellow line, and Jeff wasn't below the yellow line and got spun out. And and the other one is he clearly was pulling on that fender on the backstretch. Clearly. Boy, John, this is a tough... Oh, we see Mike Hilton there, the president of NASCAR, on the phone talking to someone. That's Mike France. just on the left of the screen. <laughs> I hear Jeopardy music playing somewhere. The referees in race control. Talk about getting thrown in the fire, huh, John Darby? Man, oh man, the <laughs> first race. And look at how tough, what a tough call he's got to make. Another look at it from Jeff Gordon's onboard camera. There we see the contact, and now we see Sterling clearly below the yellow line, but the right sides never go all the way below it. But see, what might get him off the hook, he's behind him here. He advances his position after Gordon spins. I mean, that might be what they're thinking. There you go. And there you see the contact. Well, I, I don't imagine they're too happy in Jeff Gordon's pit. Oh, Bill, what are they saying down there? Well, let's find out. Robbie Loomis has been on the radio talking, and Jeff, he's also been... You've been doing a little lobbying here. First of all, I know you're disappointed <laughs> about what happened. It looked like you were talking, A, about Sterling's position on the restart, and then B... Uh, his uh, appearance out of the car on the backstretch, Rob. Yeah, the restrictor plate racing, you know, it's real important that you lay back on the start like they did to get a good run. That's what caused the big wreck back here behind him. And then uh, when it kind of eased below the line there to turn us, and then he got out to fix it on the back straight under red. But we'll let NASCAR deal with it. They usually are pretty fair. You know, the rule is you can't work on your car at all under red, and we'll see what they say. So you made your point to the NASCAR official working your pit. What did you see on the monitor, Rob? Uh, all I saw on the monitor was him trying to get his fender clear, and, you know, whether the thing will clear. But we'll leave it up to NASCAR. They've been doing a good job with it. We'll see what they decide. Okay, that's the story from the 24 pit. Matt? Well, down here in the 40 pit, Tommy Baldwin Jr., Ward Burton's crew chief from the 22 team, came down and talked to Tony Glover, the team manager. He says, look, God forbid anything should happen to your tire, tell him to pull left out of traffic and we'll go by on the high side. So if he should have some kind of trouble with that tire, if it indeed rubs and does start to go down, pull to the left and we'll go by on the right side. That's not going to work, Matt, because if that tire goes down, the car on its own is going to the right. I'm just looking over there, BP, look over there. Just, I know there's a judgment call over there. You, we don't see any French judges in there, do we? Uh, <laughs> I don't see any place. <laughs> we'll be okay then. Should be okay. <laughs> All right. The officials are talking about it. Trying to figure out what they're going to do. We're waiting to hear. Was Sterling Marlin out of bounds and advance his position? Did he work on his car under the red flag? What's it going to be? Well, I, well, I think we all saw him on his pull the fender out. That's pretty obvious, Al. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all saw that, so we know he tried to pull the fender away from the tire. Now, the yellow line situation down in turn one, that is a judgment call, and that's up to NASCAR. Continuing to clean up on the front side of the racetrack here where all the mayhem happened. Was I sleeping, or did you explain what that penalty was on the, if you work under the red flag? What is the, what is the rule? I'm waiting to hear what the penalty would be there. What do you do to him? But I know guys must have worked on the cars on the red before. Wh whatever happened to them? They were always sneaky when they did the oh, okay. They were not as clear. And, I mean, there's not as uh, blatant as Sterling Marlin was. They always kind of sneaked around a little bit. Somebody must have gotten in trouble for it. One, someday. You know, I don't recall it. Ever? In, in my time on the Winston Cup circuit, I don't ever recall it. Someone being penalized for working on their car under the red flag. So... I have no, I, I have no memory of, of that ever happening before. And I just have no memory. I'm, I've got a, in, in my hand a card 
that uh, they give out to all the, the crew chiefs and all of the uh, pit road officials, which explains race proceedings penalties. And I'm trying to scan down it, and I don't see anything on this particular card about the uh, working on the car under the red flag. So we'll follow up with NASCAR here and find out. We're waiting to hear. Separate from that, it's going to be a most interesting finish. Which Sterling Mullins got the same problem that Jeff Gordon had. He's the leader. Now they're all going to be laying back, trying to get a run on him. If that tire holds up and if he doesn't get penalized, you got Ward Burton, Jeffrey Bodine, Elliot Sadler, Dale Jarrett all up there. And you're going to have Jeff Gordon storming from the back of the pack on fresh tires. And he's only going to have about three laps to do it. Got Michael Walter back in 11th position as well. Here's what they were saying down in the Sterling Marlin pits a minute ago. Sterling, were you below the yellow line when you passed Gordon? He run me down there. My left side was below the bleep. He run me down below it. Team owner Chip Ganassi there. And that was honest. I mean, that's exactly what happened. He, he had his left side below the yellow line when Jeff Gordon the tried to... at the tail end of the longest line, Glove. All right, they just made the call. The longest line or lead lap? At the tail end of the longest line. About what I ask an official. That is the message being relayed to Sterling Marlin from his team. Oh, what? There is only one line. Under 10 laps to go, there's only one line, so he, they're saying that he's got to start all the way at the back of the field. Is that right, Wally? Yep. And, and what NASCAR's determination on this deal with the yellow, with the yellow line is, since the yellow had dropped, they say that the, what was happening was the 40 car went down underneath the yellow line to avoid the accident. He was not gaining any positions. Okay. He went down under the yellow line to avoid the accident? He went down to the yellow line. When, when the yellow was out, Jeff had checked up. Everybody was slowing down, and they decided that the 40 car went down underneath Jeff, Jeff's car. The yellow was already out at this point now, so he couldn't advance his he couldn't advance his position anyway. He could race him back to the yellow. He could race him back to the line. They had taken the green flag. They could race him back to the line. So, well... They decided that he, as the wreck was happening at the start-finish line, the 40 car went down. Jeff was down there. He was avoiding Jeff, and, you, and there's one shot. Actually, you can see when Jeff was coming down, he was coming back up the track, and Sterling came back up the track, but that's, that's what they call him. And let's make clear, you just walked over to NASCAR Race Control to ask that, and that's the answer you got. Right. So why is he, go, is he going to the end of the longest line, Sterling Marlin? He's going to the end of the longest line, but it would be for working on the on car. On the car during the red. Under that, the red flag. Right. Okay. Correct. So no penalty for going below the line, but the penalty to the end of the longest line is for working on the car under the red. Right. Is not that, the, no, exactly. Not the yellow line is, is not an issue. Okay. It's for working on the car during the red. And he goes to the end of the longest line. So therefore he'll come in, they'll work on the car, knock the fender out, change four tires. Four tires and go. Agree with those decisions? It doesn't matter. Either way, whether you get penalized for going below the yellow line or working on the car, you're, I mean, you're going to get penalized for one of those, one of those, so I don't know what, what's I, the difference. It's fair enough. I mean, what are they going to do, make him go the end of the long, long, longest line twice? They can't do that. I mean, so it's fair enough, the, the penalty. Here's the situation. The green flag is in the air. See the green flag waving? Now, Sterling Marlin is trying to get by. He clearly has the left side below the yellow line. Jeff Gordon goes down to try to block it. Okay, now is the yellow waving right here yet? Not yet. No. Now it is. Okay, now the yellow flag starts waving. You know, the wreck was happening a long time in that picture, but I couldn't see the flag. I don't see where that's an issue anyway. But it doesn't matter. Well, it, it's it's clear that the penalty on the backstretch for working on the car under the red, that was very clear, very obvious. Right. And he's and been penalized for that. And that's penalty enough. Yes, for the whole deal. That's 
Oh, once again, here's Sterling Mullen getting out of his car, going over. The right front fender is rubbing the tire. He grabs hold of the fender, trying to get it away from the tire because he doesn't want to stop. That is an infraction under NASCAR rules. You're not allowed to do anything to your vehicle on the red flag conditions. How about Jeff Gordon in this deal? He get robbed in this? No. I mean, they made contact on the racetrack. And you heard Gordon say he, that he spun he, himself, he took out. himself out. He blocked. So he's got to go to the back of the line. Marlon's got to go to the back of the line. And Ward Burton's going to find himself leading the Daytona 500 when we go back green with about three laps to go. Look at all those wrecked cars. <laughs> Looks like Martinsville out there. Coming up after the Daytona 500 on NBC, it's the NBA with the defending champion Lakers, Portland Trailblazers. That's after our Daytona coverage here on NBC. Then later tonight at 7 Eastern time, our coverage of the Winter Olympic Games continues from Salt Lake City, including the presentation of the gold medal to the Canadian figure skating pair that was involved in all the judging controversy earlier this week. I'd just like to say one more thing. Sterling going to have to come in anyway. Because that, that fender was rubbing on that tire hard. There's no way that thing was going to take another four laps. I agree. He probably was going to have to come in. And you say, was it penalty enough? I mean, they, he can't win the Daytona 500 now. That's the biggest penalty of all. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what. After what's happened over the last hour or so, I'm not going to make that statement with you, VP. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if anybody that's still on the track ends up winning this thing. I mean, look at all the people who've fallen by the wayside all day long. Started on lap two. Tony Stewart, one of the favorites to win, gone. Engine failure. Dale Earnhardt Jr., cut tire, lap 23. Another favorite to win, gone. It's going to be a heck of a three or four laps. Still, got, so, sorry, well, just still waiting while they clean up the racetrack before they pull the red flag. It looks like they're just about done. They had some of the jet blowers out on the track taking all the oil dry and the bits of metal and things like that down to the inside of the speedway. And in fact, the word has just gone out to crank the cars up, fire the engines out on the back straight away. We got four guys in the top seven right now that have not won the Daytona 500. Ward Burton, Elliot Sadler, Mark Martin, Mark Martin Ryan, Ryan Newman. Newman. And the experienced guys, Jeffrey Bodine, Dale Jarrett, Bill Elliott, have a Daytona 500 trophy. Red flag is withdrawn. Yellow flag is now back out. Now you can work on your race car. And But you heard, when we heard the restart just a moment ago, and Jeff Gordon was accelerating, trying to get his car up to speed, did you hear the big drop in RPMs when he shifted from second gear to third gear? See, that's one problem with the transmissions at Daytona. You have to have such a low first gear mm -hmm. to get you out of the pits. So then second gear becomes too much. You can't have the ratios close enough and you always have a big drop off in RPM between one of the gears. In his case, it was between second and third and he lost all that momentum when he went to third gear. So they're moving now back around toward the front stretch. They'll get the one to go signal when they come to the start finish line and it will be a three lap race to see who wins the Daytona 500. 14 cars on the lead lap. Hey, BP. There you go. How'd you do that? Well, you led the right ones. The last, the last four, <laughs> that's right. David Pearson was leading and spun out, right? That's right, with four laps to go. Derek Cope, 1990. Dale Earnhardt led by about a mile. Cut a tire down. Cope went on to the victory. I'll tell you who may turn around and be the absolute story of this day. Jeffrey Bodine. He's going to be running second after the penalty to Sterling Marlin. Let's hear from his team. Johnny Allen is his crew chief. And Johnny, you know, Betty Parsons said earlier, you guys had one of the strongest motors after that dyno test the other day. Can Jeffrey get some help and get around everybody? I don't know. There's a lot of conspiring and deal-making going on behind this. Uh, but I seen a deal the other day, and they said uh, that we, uh, there's no deals, just discussions. And uh, we, uh, we hoping to go good here at the end. We got one lap to go before we go green, and uh, we'll see what we got left. Mick Suzuki Indian cars running good. 
Remember yesterday, Johnny was working on the one car of Jimmy Spencer, and it failed at the end. And, crew, and uh, car owner James Finch, he's gone back to his boat. He's left. If they win, he won't be in victory lane. James, you might want to come back. Marty? Well, Dave, what an interesting day. And if he does win the race, Jeffrey Bodine, he's got to pass Tommy Baldwin's driver out there, Ward Burton. What a crazy day. Can Ward keep it up front? A lot of Fords behind your Dodge. Yeah, I was just telling Ward that, you know, but... Uh real proud of everybody at this Caterpillar Dodge uh, back at the shop. They've done an awesome job to put this car where it is right now. And, uh, you know, had a lot of Fords run up front today. Uh, you know, they got a good break with NASCAR. But uh, hopefully we'll come out top. You know, we're real excited right now. And uh, it's time to let it eat. Every man for himself now. Hey, guys, you think we've seen a lot of blocking in the first 195 laps? Watch these last few. It's going to be wild. Three laps to decide the Daytona 500. Ward Burton leads. Jeffrey Bodine is second. Elliot Sadler third. Dale Jarrett fourth. And Ryan Newman is fifth. You'll have also in the mix, excuse me, Mark Martin is fifth. Ryan Newman is sixth. And you'll have Jeff Gordon and Sterling Marlin back in 11th and 12th. Here's what Jeff Gordon said right after the crash. Oh, that was my own fault. I mean, Sterling hung back so much there that, uh, I mean, you know, he, I just, I didn't have a choice but to slow down there. And he had a run on me and I blocked him, you know, got myself turned. There you have it. We are coming to the green. Look at how far back from the pace car Ward Burton is hanging. And look how far Elliot Sadler is hanging behind Jeffrey Bodine, all trying to time it right to get that run, that great run to allow them to go by. Three laps to settle the Daytona 500. Well, it looks like they got a run on them. Look at the blocking going on back in the pack. And look, somebody's got a great run on the outside. Ryan Newman. The youngster from Indiana in the 12 car. And this is exactly what Ward Burton needed. He needed those Fords to get side by side, and it's working to perfection for him. Johnny Benson in the 10 car up high try to follow Newman. Jeff Gordon and Marlin not in the picture yet. He's got to be careful, though, BP, when this group catches him. Here comes Dale Jarrett. Behind Jeffrey Bodine in the 88 car. And Elliot Sanders moved into that second spot. Right on the back bumper board, Burton. The first two have never won the 500. The second two have won it four times between them. Two laps to go as they come to the start-finish line. Marlin has caught the pack. Jeff Gordon is back from it. Check that. That's Craven. Gordon has caught the pack, too. I think Ward Burton has his car up to speed now. I think he's going to be okay. I think you're right, BP. These guys aren't close enough and lined up enough to make a move on Ward Burton. <laughs> Should Spotter tell him where to go to block those guys? The traffic mixing and shuffling behind him. But Sadler and Jeff Bodai not able to mount a charge yet. Everyone on their feet at Daytona, some 170,000. As South Boston, Virginia's Ward Burton comes to the line. White flag. Final lap. Here comes Dale Jarrett looking outside for third. Can't get it done. Whoa! He bounces off Mark Martin. Jarrett is crashing in the final lap. Everybody gets by him okay. Elliot Sadler in the 21, the Wood Brothers car. Left to try and chase Ward Burton to the checkered flag. And if Elliot Sadler was shaking, finishing third in the Pepsi 400, just imagine what that young man is going through now, about to finish second in the Daytona 500. Got ready to faint. I'm telling you. Eighth two times is his best previous finish in the 500. Now in his eighth try at the Great American Race, it's going to be Ward Burton driving his Dodge to victory lane. On, Checker Come flag on. is up, and Ward Burton is going to win the 44th Daytona 500. Racing and Ward Burton have just won the Great American Race. Uh, good for Ward. Talking to Ward Burton said, what's been your biggest thrill in racing? He said, winning the Southern 500 in Darlington, South Carolina. Old race. My family was there. I guarantee you, he'll change his tune now. Oh, boy. Are you, are you kidding? Not anymore. This is it. The last time Dodge won the Daytona 500, 
1974 with Richard Petty. Ward Burton never led all day until those final laps when he took the lead from Sterling Marlin. Matt? And Tommy Baldwin. And the cat guy's going crazy down here. Tommy, you moved south in 1996, sacrificed everything in an old Cadillac. You had no job. And now look. Daytona 500 winner. Does, does this reality match that dream, Tommy? You told me you dreamed of this win. Oh, uh, man, I tell you, this is for my little boy back home in Long Island who's uh, stuck to out without me being around for some years. And uh, hope he's proud of me today. And, uh, you know, everyone at Caterpillar and the Dodge, I want to thank everybody. All the BDR guys, man, we won the Daytona 500. Enough said. The Cat guys are going to celebrate tonight. Bill Davis, the team owner from Arkansas, one of the most respected and well-liked men in the NASCAR Winston Cup garage. Bill Davis, Gail Davis, one of the nicest people in the garage area. And he's going to have a Daytona 500 trophy on the mantle. I talked with Ward Burton earlier this week. Said he'd spent so much time this winter crisscrossing America on fundraising trips. Spokesman for the Wildlife Foundation, among other things. He said, I'm ready to go racing. I think I can win the Daytona 500. He's done it. BP, what's that ride like? Oh, man. You, you, there's no words to describe it. As a matter of fact, Ward Burton right now probably has to take this lap, this extra four or five minutes, just to get some kind of control over his emotions. All the firemen come out congratulating Ward Burton. This is a very, very emotional moment. Ward, the oldest of the two Burton brothers on the Winston Cup circuit. Started this race in 19th place, and as I said a minute ago, never led all day until those final few laps. When Sterling Marlin went to pit road, Ward Burton took over the lead and held it to the checkered flag. There's Bill Davis. Nice, good-looking man right there. That a boy, Bill. Okay, Ward, I think you can probably come to the victory lane and talk to these folks now. Elliot Sadler finished second, Jeff Bodine third, Kurt Busch fourth, Michael Waltrip came through that last shuffle to finish fifth, Jeff Gordon wound up ninth, Sterling Marlin eighth, and Dale Jarrett did not finish the last lap. He wound up 14th. You see those NASCAR officials going checking the rear spoiler on the back of the Caterpillar Dodge. They have a minimum height requirement or angle. It's supposed to be about 55 degrees, and obviously he has passed. Let's go to Marty Snyder. Okay, Jeff, uh, let's first of all start off talking about the contact out there on the racetrack with you and Sterling. You said on the radio, was it your fault? Do you have time to think about it under the red flag? And your thoughts now? Yeah, I mean, me being spun was my fault because uh, he hung back so far, which I didn't think he was supposed to be able to do, do but he did, and, and he had me. You know, he, uh, he, he got a restart. He had me, and I moved down in front of him to block him, and I did, and got me a little bit of a push, but he still got inside me, and uh, yeah, I just tried to block him, and all I had to do was just hold the wheel straight and spun me out. But, uh, you know, it, I, I probably should have just given it up once he got inside me and uh, still had a battle and a shot to win the thing. Um, you know, I had to see that last caution. We were, uh, man, we were... We were so stout and in perfect position, and it was a wild and crazy race out there. I tell you, uh, I, I went from the back to the front, the front to the back. Uh, it, it was uh, it was incredible. I'm just thankful to come home ninth uh, with the Dupont Chevrolet. I want to thank uh, Dupont, Pepsi, Quaker State, Fritos, uh, GMAC. Um, you know, it was just a it's just a great effort for us today, and uh, you know, it just wasn't the way we wanted it to be. A very disappointing night for a man who drove a very good race, Matt. Well, Sterling, first off, can you even begin to describe uh, your side of the controversy? No, I mean, it's a Daytona 500, and uh, you're going to try to try to win the thing. And, uh, you know, laid back, tried to get a run on Jeff. And uh, you know, since he got across the line, hooked left, and, and got up his quarter panel. And, you know, his, his deal is he's going to try to block. And if I was in his shoes, I'd try to block, too. And we just hooked, hooked together, hooked bumpers, and he spun out, and I went on and uh, got my fender on the tire. So, uh, you know, we tried to get it pulled off, and but uh, NASCAR didn't like it. I just go to rear. Did you question that? I mean, you know, them questioning you, messing with the fence? Well, I seen Earnhardt doing it at Richmond one time. So uh, he got out and cleaned his windshield off, so I thought it was okay. I don't guess it was. <laughs> I guess not. Sterling Marlin. 
<laughs> Nearly pulls off a win here in Daytona, Alan. Disappointed. <laughs> At least he could smile about yeah, losing really. the Daytona 500. Man. Ward Burton will add his name to the Harley J. Earl Trophy as winner of the Daytona 500. Something very few drivers who compete in NASCAR Winston Cup racing ever get to experience. And he's going to realize that dream right now. Here's his wife, Tabitha, coming into the winner's circle. Had their second child over the winter, December 10th. He's just slowly taking his time because he wants to do this right. And savor the moment. Savor the moment. That a boy. Or just savor the moment. Can't blame him. Probably still regaining his composure a little bit, too. Bill Weber has the pleasure of interviewing the winner of the Daytona 500. Bill? And I imagine he's doing exactly what you guys were talking about. Taking his time, composing himself, thinking about this moment. Winner of the Daytona 500. Putting on the cap. Have to adjust that, of course. It will be a, you won't need to see him get out. No matter where you're watching, you'll be able to hear him get out. And here it is, the 2002 Daytona 500 champion, Ward Burton. A lot of people from Dodge, Caterpillar, and his family. Forever now, they will introduce Ward Burton as champion of the Daytona 500. Congratulations. Wow, well, I tell you, I didn't do it by myself, though. Uh, team worked all the hard, all winter. Dodge support, Caterpillar support. How about that Elliott Sadler? I pushed him to a third place finish in the uh, Firecracker 400 or the Pepsi 400. And, Elliot worked with me just flawlessly there at the end. And one Virginian to another. Ward, tell me about the final restart to the checkers. No bracken. I didn't ever even look at the flag. I wasn't going to stop. When I saw the other guys back off, that's when I backed off. I can't believe it. You know, a lot of, well, a lot of what happens here is atmosphere, luck. Uh, we had some luck today. 29 cars spun over there. We almost got it. But uh, proud of my team. Great race team. You walked it very slowly to the green flag on that restart because you were aware of what had happened previously? I was aware of Jeff Bodine. He's an old veteran. He knows what he's doing. I just didn't want him to get a big speed on me. I wasn't sure whether we were going to win it or not. I knew we were going to have one hell of a chance at it. Ward, you fought so hard to get to this point, this point in your career. There were some times when this team wasn't even going to have sponsorship. Now you have a strong sponsorship, a new manufacturer behind you, and a win in the Daytona 500. Has your dream come true today? Well, one of them has. This is the first year that Bill Davis Raisin hasn't had to make, make a big change of some kind to catch up to the big boys. So we're ready to rock all year. I don't know what was going to happen today, but... It's a great way to start, but I feel really good about the whole year. Congratulations. You're the Daytona 500 champ. <laughs> Ward Burton, even I get a hug. Congratulations. They talked about Chevy being fast, and Ford was in the spotlight all week, but at the Daytona 500, you could say Dodge was the spoiler. Alan? Yes, you can, Bill. Dodge getting a spoiler rule change earlier in the week, as well as the Fords. And Ward Burton made maximum use of it. He is the champion of the 2002 Daytona 500 as we look at the final results. Ryan Newman in seventh spot. Jeffrey Bona. How about that third place finish? And Jeff Gordon, Sterling Marlin, they crashed together. They finished eighth and ninth together. Michael Waltrip finishing fifth after last year's win. You see only 14 cars wound up on the lead lap. Dale Jarrett getting credit as the last one of those. Terry Labonte, one of them involved in that last crash with about five laps to go. Mike Wallace, seven laps down, will finish 21st. Kenny Schrader, great run today. Dale Earnhardt Jr., so many problems throughout the day, wound up 29th place. And this, the attrition was unusually high today. 
Matt Kinder, the first car out, finishes 33rd. I guess attrition was caused by the big crash in <laughs> turn one. That would cause some of it. <laughs> Tony Stewart, one of the pre-race favorites, out at lap number two. 12 different leaders, 20 lead changes. The last one when Ward Burton took over the top spot. More post-race interviews when we come back. The NBA on NBC coming up after our coverage from Daytona. The Lakers and Trailblazers coming up. First, the afterglow of what was a terrific Great American race. Dave Burns. Elliot Sandler, you finished third here last July, and you were shaking coming to the line. What were you doing this time to finish second? I was a little bit more calm, but uh, I'm going to tell you what. To struggle like we have all week, to come in here and finish second, unbelievable. Playing a motocraft four tours was very, very good. Just want to thank them for them standing behind me. A lot of four people in the stands today, the U.S. Air Force. Man, it wore me out, man. It's... And he takes a cold sip of Coca-Cola, Marty, to cool off. Well, Dave, for a man who nearly lost his life here two years ago, Jeffrey Bodine was a comeback kid today. How much fun did you have playing out there with those kids today? The car was obviously good. Yeah, I had a great car, and it doesn't matter who you are, how good you are. You can't do what I did without a good car, a good team, and, and uh, James Finch uh, gave me a, a great car, and I want to thank them, thank the Mikasuki Indian Gaming Tribe for sponsoring us. They're going to do some more racing with them, and uh, what a great day. I mean, it, it, it got a little tough there at the end. I mean, we're all trying to make deals and try to figure out how to get by the guy in front of us, but I, I knocked my nose in a little bit on that last wreck, and it slowed us down, but... Uh, come back, yeah. You know, I think people had, had written me off, but uh, they shouldn't have done that. I'm back. 52-year-old Jeffrey Bodine finishes third. Matt Yoakum. Defending 500 winner Michael Waltrip. Boy, how do you describe this one? Wild. I think I just tell people I spun out with five to go at Daytona and ran fifth, and that's all the description it needs. When Kevin wrecked, that was wild, man. I just dove right at him. I knew what to do, and I just hoped he'd be out of the way when I got there. He was. Our Napa Auto Parts Chevrolet was a part of the story the whole week, man. And that's all you can ask for. That's all you can ask for as a team. NASCAR would chop the other dude's spoiler off. We'd work a little harder. Then they'd chop it off some more, and we'd just work harder. Then they chopped it off again. Probably should have said something after that one because it looked like we were overmatched at the end. You probably should have. Michael Walter finishes fifth at Daytona, Allen. Again, a look at the top ten as the victory celebration continues. For Ward Burton, Elliott Sadler, and Burton, a Virginia sweep of the top two spots. Don't forget tonight, the 2002 Olympic Winter Games continue at 7 Eastern and Pacific on NBC. And tomorrow at noon Eastern and Pacific on TNT, the encore presentation of the Daytona 500. The NBA on NBC is next. What a great day. What a great race. Fantastic day. What a thrill it was to be here and watch and talk about the Daytona 500. BP, let's go fishing for a few months. It's good. <laughs> See you in July, fans. We'll turn it over to our Fox colleagues starting at Rockingham next week, and we look forward to NASCAR on NBC resuming in July. Daytona's always been a magical place. Last year, the magic went out of the 500 a little bit, but this year it's back. And the fans have all gone away smiling after a safe and a great Daytona 500 won by Virginia's Ward Burton. For Benny Parsons, Wally Dollenbach, Bill Weber, and our entire NASCAR on NBC crew, I'm Alan Bestwick. Hope you've enjoyed our coverage of the 44th Daytona 500. See you in Chicago come July.